Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi. So we are going live on YouTube. And I have got tool tips for you tonight. Hello. Here we go. So, um, yay, there we go. Oh, okay. Making sure that we are live. Hi. So um, I have got a couple of things to show you tonight for bevel. Uh, to help make your bezels even better. Um, and uh, as far as fitting your stones a little bit more exactly, getting a better uh, fit on them. And um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know and I will um, answer them live if I can. So um, one of the things about bezels that I know is really frustrating for a lot of people is trying to get them to be the right fit and have them not be you know sloppy or loose and it's so frustrating when you're doing it and they're too tight and then you have to stretch it to you know and or and or if you're breaking it um and or if it's too big and you have to cut it down so i want to show you a couple of quick tricks on one getting it measured right you can solder it a little bit better without any kind of crimps or filing uh, my trick for that and i'm going to show you a couple of tricks to hold it together while you're cutting it and what you can do if you need to uh, adjust it to make it fit your stone better after the fact. So if you've made a bezel and you've soldered it down and suddenly your stone's like too big for your bezel and that just completely sucks. So um, let me show you a couple of tips here. Um, you know, I'm gonna be doing this with silver and the bezels that I'm using are sterling silver or fine silver. Uh, my backing and some of the other materials are uh, sterling. But usually if I'm working in sterling silver, my bezels are going to be fine silver, of course, because the fine silver bezels are a little softer. They have a higher melting temperature, and um, which is nice because of the very thin mass of the, the bezels. So they have a tendency to um, uh, heat up really quickly because they're fine silver as well. But um, what you want to be careful about, and it's hard to see, especially in a really well-lit studio, is overheating your bezel. Um, one of my students recently asked me, you know, why are my bezels, you know, shrinking so much? And uh, we realized that she was overheating them and that they were actually like fusing into themselves and kind of shrinking. So you do want to be careful not to overheat the bezels so that you're not like fusing them together. You just want to make sure the solder is running. So that's thing number one. Um, if you have a hard time seeing that, you might want to dim your lights around your solder station or the other option is use something like, you know, really watching your flux, knowing what it means when your flux gets to that glassy point, that that's about the time your solder is going to flow and keep an eye on it. Um, the other thing you can try is using a uh, black Sharpie on your marker or black Sharpie marker on your bezel, because that can be a heat temperature indicator as well. Um, the black Sharpie burns off at about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And your fine silver is going to anneal between about 480 and 800 degrees. So there's quite the range there. But if it's on a plate like this, um, it's going to be constantly trying to even out its heat if it's on a plate. So the black Sharpie, as it burns off, you know that you're getting close to annealing temperature. You can usually see the flux at that point and really kind of keep an eye out for those visual clues. But, um, but let's uh, take a look and see. Um, how one can best um, do the um, do a little bit of uh, cutting and making this a little bit better. So I'm going to flip over here to my document camera so you guys can see my bench pen a little bit better while I'm working on this. Hello there. There we go. Yeah, I'm keeping everything nice and tight. So I've got a couple of um, tools and examples I want to show you here that are great for being able to shape those bezels. Um, one is my pencil. I love being able to form my bezels using my pencil. Um, it keeps me from getting any little uh, nicks and bobs in my uh, bezel that I'm going to have to clean up later. So by using the soft end of a pencil to kind of shape it, it really helps me to get uh, that around a little bit more cleanly. So the other thing that I usually do is use the, the heaviest bezel that I can get away with. Um, a heavy bezel is going to give you a little more material to work with. And especially if you've got some big stones, 
you really want to bump up the gauge of your bevel. Um, I know with a, a lot of uh, people, they just buy what's out there. You can always get fine silver sheet in any gauge and cut it down to your bevel, okay? So you can do that really easily. The other thing I'll do when I'm making a bevel is I'll wrap my bezel around the stone uh, clockwise. I'm right-handed, so this makes it really easy for me to hold my tab. And I've seen people mark this with like a Sharpie to cut it, but that is usually gonna give you a really wide area of play. So it's really not very accurate using a Sharpie. Um, when you're looking at a one millimeter wide, you know, this is a, uh, millimeter wide Sharpie, pretty much, if I mark this, it's going to give me a, a relatively, you know, accurate space, but it's really kind of hard to, you know, see it. And if I am cutting these two pieces separately, the chances of it lining up are going to be really slim. So I want to make sure that I'm doing this in a way that's going to um, keep it together while I'm soldering it, or while I'm sawing it. And I usually saw mine right on the stone. Even if it's kind of a, a softer stone, this makes it a little bit easier to be able to get this really accurate. Um, and to keep this together, if I am wanting to get this to fit my stone properly, I'll use the eraser and I lay my pencil down on my anvil here, bench block, and form it right around the stone. If you have any problems uh, getting this fit around your stone, and the bezel is wanting to fight back, anneal it first. And that really makes it a lot more cooperative because a lot of times if it's got any um, life in it, if it's a little work hardened and silver, fine silver can be work hardened, it will want to flex back out. You can even see it on this one. It flexes out almost a millimeter, millimeter and a half from where it is when it's tight. So I really wanna make sure that if I anneal this first, it's gonna be dead soft and I'm gonna be able to wrap it without it springing back too badly. The other thing that um, our Fox partner, Helen, uh, just realized, and she passed this tip on, so this is Helen Cowart's uh, really good tool tip, is use um, a little bit of tape on to hold your bezel together if you need to while you are trying to cut it. And I have found that if I do it this way and kind of set my, piece right on the packing tape and wrap it over like so. That'll hold my bezel together while I'm getting my saw ready. So I can see through it, I can see my mark if I've got a mark, but what I'm usually gonna do is hold it together like this and actually saw. Um, if you've got a 4.0 blade, that works really well to cut through the bezel wire. And I usually do it with a stone in place so it keeps its shape. And as I'm cutting, I cut both pieces. And even if I'm cutting at an angle, they're both at the same angle. So it'll cut it exactly where I need it. And the overlap is gonna give me enough allowance to make up for the gap from where the saw is removing material. So it makes it exactly the right length. And it's gonna make it exactly the, the right cut. So as I saw through both, it's gonna give me a little bit of allowance when I bring them together even if they're you know, shifted one way or the other, um, if my saw is tipped one way or the other, it's still gonna give me a really good accurate seam. So let me show you how I do that real quick. And let me bring you right over here to the, the bench. Uh, turn that down, there we go. You guys can see a little bit better. And turn that light on there. Right so what I'm gonna do is start on the upstroke like that and then just go straight up and down as I can. It doesn't take but a few strips to get through those pieces. There we go. And I can tell immediately when I've cut through to the stone, it makes a different sound. So um, I wanna be careful that I don't saw too far, but that, once I take the packing tape off, I'll only have a little tab that's left. It'll capture that piece of metal for me and the piece on the inside so I don't lose any of my pieces. And the seam is perfect, right? And this may take a little bit of practice, but I don't have to file the seam. I don't have to put sandpaper through it. My seam is really straight. I don't have the crimped edge. So if I tried to cut this with shears or wire cutters, 
I'm crimping it and I'll end up with a wide solder seam. With this, my solder seam is going to be almost non-existent. Um, it's really tight and straight and it fits my stone perfectly. So I just need to make sure when I line this up on my solder station that I've got a little tension on that seam like that and I'm good to go. And that's going to give me exactly the right shape and size for my stone. The um, other thing that a lot of people have a problem with is the height of the bevel. So if you've got, if you've measured it and you're getting it a little close with a little bit of allowance, um, you should be right on target. But sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, how close you can get. So what I usually do, taking a needle and just running it around the inside of my bevel. So I'm tipping it like along the length of my stone. And I've already done it on the stone, but just taking my needle and kind of marking the inside where the top of my stone is. And that will give me an indicator as I file and clean up around the outside, how close I can get. So this one has been fitted and you can see there's just a little bit and this stone is a little bit arched from end to end. So having the same height bevel all the way around wouldn't necessarily work. So I do need the ends to be a little bit lower. And that's going to be true with any kind of like pointed stone as well. The ends are going to be a little bit lower. And being able to chase around the inside with a needle will give you the right height for those stones. So that's always good. One of the other problems that uh, a lot of people face is making sure that their stone is fitting the bezel after uh, they have made it. So you may find that um, the stone isn't quite sitting in there properly or flat or a point is too long or you've shifted it a little bit. And, you know, instead of, you know, you've got this thing almost finished and then you realize, oh my gosh, the bezel is not fitting my stone properly. Um, so instead of like deconstructing the whole piece and taking the bezel off, um, especially if it's something like a, a gallery wire that's a little delicate and doesn't want to be taken off, um, you can easily, instead of reshaping this, reshape your stone. So the stone that I've got here is a little bit of droopy, and I needed to um, just bevel this top edge and take down a little bit of the edge on this so it sat a little more evenly in my setting. And so I had enough room to push down the little prong for this setting. So what I can use is um, the diamond birds. And I love the little diamond wheels for this process. And I use them all the time. And you probably, if you follow me at all on Instagram or on YouTube, you probably have seen me use the, um, the diamond birds for different things, including the little box that I use as a lapidary uh, makeshift cutting wheel. So what I'm gonna do is insert the diamond wheel into my flex shaft. And with this one, because I need to do it at a little bit of an angle, I just need to make sure anytime I'm using uh, a diamond wheel and uh, cleaning up a stone like this, that I am using some water. And this has a little notch in it here so that I can drop my little diamond blade right into my sponge there. And I've got a little bit of water to make sure my sponge is completely wet. And that will keep my, uh, here we go. There we go. Um, keep my sponge wet. And that will keep my blade wet like that, so my blade's running through that wet sponge. And now I can easily keep my stone wet as well. So, sort of taking that around, all the debris is dragged right back into my sponge. There we go. So any place that's a little high, like right here on the front, I need to take that down. There we go. that right up. So if I need to shape a softer stone, really easy to do with my diamond wheels. And then they should fit. There we go. That's much better. 
uh, fit right into your setting. So you don't have to run the risk of, you know, tearing your piece apart. Um, when a diamond burr can easily uh, be helpful to reshape that to get it into the setting that you're you're working with. Um, this is especially helpful if you're working with softer stones like um, agates and uh, anything that's usually in a cabochon form. Um, those work really well. The other tool that I really like a lot are little mandrels like these. Uh, shaping mandrels can be really helpful to be able to get the shapes that you need ahead of time. Or if you need to stretch it out a little bit before you solder it down, uh, having little, uh, little mini mandrels like this can be really helpful. So there you go. Here's uh, a couple of tips on cutting, making sure the height's right, making sure that things are fitting. And um, I think that is all I've got for you today. So, aha, uh -huh. hello. And if you have any questions, of course, um, let me know. Um, oh, hi, nice spot. How are you? Howdy. And um, but yes, there you go. So some simple tricks to be able to help you get your bezels together and uh, work with them. So a little bit of a little bit of tape, um, a little bit of a saw and the right saw blade, and you're good to go. Um, if you have any questions, email us at info at littlemetalboxes.com. Make sure to check out our website for the upcoming classes and see what we've got going on. Um, oh, where do you purchase the little mini mandrels? Says Pamela. Hello, Pamela. Well, these I got from, um, uh, oh gosh, uh, from uh, Monzon Jeweler down in Florida. And he has a whole bunch of these. But you can find little mini mandrels like this on Amazon as well as Etsy. And this set came with a, a heart, a oval, a little cushioned square like that one, and marquee, an actual square a teardrop, emerald cut, hexagon, and a triangle. So my set is, uh, I think there's nine in the set. And I think I paid about 55 bucks for the set of mini mandrels. These are fantastic. I've also got some little bezel mandrels that are uh, longer that are round, oval, square. So these guys uh, you can get from most jewelry supply places. This one is, I have an oval and a round. Um, and having the oval and round mandrels like these is nice because the taper is so long that you don't really taper the bezel too badly when you're working on it. So give those a try. Those aren't too terribly expensive. And when you're really trying to sort of you know, stretch those things out a little bit, they can be really helpful just to give them a little tap or get them in uh, a position on your vise where you can sort of tap the mandrel into the vise and stretch your uh, pieces a little bit more. So here you go. Um, I think, let me see if I've got, um, yeah, let me make sure we're still uh, going live here. Yeah, here we go. And making sure we're still up to date. I think we are. Here we go. Yeah, that's where I get those little mandrels. And um, let's see, there we go. There we go, get that updated. So um, the tape is a great trick, that's Helen's tip on that and I had not done that before because I usually hold it but the tape is great because you can like tape it on there set it down grab your tools and then come back to it which makes it really helpful so yeah thanks to Helen Cowart for that tip and yeah here you go Wendy hi nice to see you um yeah if you have any questions like I said uh let us know we've got uh Another chain class coming up with Julia, who is amazing. I've been sitting in on those classes and those are always fun. Um, we've got setting up your home studio. We've got uh, Leslie Perino is gonna be doing another enameling class with us. And that is the coolest class I sat in when she did it with us before this fall. And she's got that coming up on Memorial Day weekend. Um, so enameling, we've got some wax carving coming up. Uh, Julia's doing, uh, Sparks, which is another design class for jewelers. And um, so we've done sketchbook design and the Sparks is the next in the series for the design classes. And that's really great. Um, yeah, so we've got lots of fun classes coming up. Check out the website, uh, littlemetalfoxes.com. If you have any questions, email us at info at littlemetalfoxes and look for you. Oh, hey, Julie. Uh, so yeah, make sure you uh, choose a question if you need one. and. Uh, 
check out our Instagram for all of our other little tips and tricks that we've got coming up. Um, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Oh, and for Earth Month, by the way, Tooltip Tuesdays, I've got um, Tori Hoover from Hoover and Strong is going to be joining us. He's, uh, they're a wonderful metal company. They have a very um, serious recycling commitment and their metal is all recycled, whether it's gold or silver or whatever they have. And they have some recycling programs for metal that they're going to talk about. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, Wendy Wallenberg is going to join us uh, one of those Tuesday tool tips for, um, to talk about ethical goldsmiths and what they do and their commitment to um, helping reduce the amount of gold mining and extracting that you know, doesn't really need to be done. So Wendy's going to join us for that. Um, I also have a couple of other people like Renee Ford coming up that's going to talk about uh, her soldering clay and positioning stuff. And uh, yeah, so we've got some cool tool talks coming up in the next uh, few weeks. So stay tuned uh, Tuesdays at 6.30 and uh, set your alarm clock. <laughs> we'll see you later on. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great night.